So WLAN working uh, process step number three, uh, basically step number one and step number two are more complex. On step number three, there is more on the station. So SDA can assess the WLAN after cat web tunnel are established. The station access process consists of six phrases, scanning, link authentication, association, access authentication, DHCP, and user authentication. Now, even though it looked like uh, quite complex, but I believe that every day you do this and this is quite seamless. So when you have your mobile, you look for your SSID, you see the SSID, you associate and you key in the password. That's all. So that is the SDA uh, access. Scanning. In active scanning, a station periodically searches for nearby wireless network. The station can send two types of probe request frame, probe containing an SSID and probe that do not contain SSID. Here we have two scenarios. This is the first one here where the probe send the SSID. I'm sending SSID Huawei. So this is the SDA. And if this is the AP1 who have the SSID Huawei, it's going to do a response. In this scenario, the SDA send the probe with the SSID. Uh, this is a known SSID by the station. So they are going to search for the AP with the same SSID. Only the AP with the same SSID will respond. So on the second type of a uh, Scanning. This is a scanning without the SSID. So you can see that this is a now SSID and the AP is going to respond by telling what type of service they are offering. So we call this as a active scanning without the SSID. So SDA is periodically send a probe request. This is a probe request that does not contain an SSID on the supported channel. The AP return the probe response frame to notify the SDA of the wireless service they can provide. So these are the two uh, type of uh, scanning. Then we look into the wireless security protocol. If you notice in your computer or on your mobile, they do have uh, the advanced setting. In the advanced setting, you can choose the protocol. This is where the security protocol is relevant to us. As wireless technology use radio signal to transmit service data, service data can be easily intercepted or tampered with attacker when being transmitted on an open wireless channel. As you can see, we are connected through the air and sometimes the attacker can be just nearby. So they can inject by tampering our uh, signal. So for us to ensure that these are not being intercepted or tampered with, we need to create some sort of security. So these are the security we can implement in our wireless. The first one is WEP. Uh, this standard has been quite long already. So it's an open system. Uh, the access authentication is not applicable. No encryption or WEP insecure. So this WEP, we don't use it anymore. So same, either you can go for open system or shared, doesn't really matter because this one is easily cracked. So we do not want to use WEP. Then we have WPA or WPA2 802.1x. So again, this is an open system. Uh, they can use a access authentication as 802.1x. Uh, EAP encryption can use a TKIP or CCMP. This is uh, recommended for now. Okay, it's a uh, more secure than WEP. Even though with the uh, WPA and WPA2, some hardcore hacker they're still able to hack to WPA. Then we also have another variant, uh, which is uh, PSK. So 802.1x is mainly for large ent enterprises. Uh, PSK, which is a pre-shared key. It's an open standard PSK, the same data encryption, uh, but this is easier to implement because we do not need to implement 802.1x. So this is mainly meant for small and medium sized enterprise or household user. And the latest one, uh, if you look into the standard, they also have the uh, WPA3. Okay, so this is the newest standard. So in summary, uh, you need to understand that they have two authentication, link authentication and access authentication. Link authentication is not very secure. Most of the case, we use access authentication. As you can see, the link authentication WEP using the shared key and access authentication using WPA or WPA2 running 802.1x or pre-shared key. So this is the uh, authentication that we should look into. So let's look into more detail on both the link authentication and and the access authentication. All right, so let's look into the link authentication. To ensure wireless link security, an AP need to authenticate SDA that attempt to access the AP. So there are two authentication mode here. 
So first one is an open system authentication. Another one is a shared key authentication. Now open system authentication basically means that once the station send an authentication request, then the request will be granted. So here we do not have uh, authentication. So this is no authentication. And second one here is a shared key authentication. This is where the shared key authentication require STA and AP send the same key pre-configured. The AP check whether STA has the same key and determine the authentication result. Again, this is not really secure because they are using a pre-shared key. As I showed you early on, only WEP is using the link authentication. WPA, WPA2 doesn't use the link authentication anymore. So then we come to a stage of a association. This association is between the STA and the AP, but you also need to interact with the AC. Let's look into the theory here. So after the link authentication is complete, uh, STA initiate link service negotiation using association packet, which in this case, the STA send an association request. And this is a fit AP. The feed AP is going to send the association request to the uh, access controller. So the SDA association process is actually a link service negotiation process during which the supported rate channel and the light are negotiated. The station still not associated yet, but they are just getting information on the rate and the channel. So once this information reached the AC, AC is looking into the profile and is going to send the association response and this association response from from AP was sent to the STA. Next, we look into the access authentication. As compared to the link authentication, access authentication is more important. So user access authentication differentiate user and control access right of the user. Compared with link authentication, access authentication is more secure. You will still remember on the two slides early on, I mentioned that WPA and WPA2 use this mode and uh, they can use a PSK, pre shared key, or in the enterprise, they can use the 802.1x authentication. So this is a preferred method using the WPA2 and 802.1x. Here you can see that access authentication is performed on the wireless side interface, allowing STA to send data over the wireless link once this authentication is successful. Now with the station already successful associate, then we need to go to the next stage. So in this stage, we have to get an IP address from the DHCP. The prerequisite for AP and STA to go online properly is that they have uh, obtained an IP. If STA obtained IP through the DHCP, so we have the DHCP here, the AC or aggregate switch can function as a DHCP to assign IP as well. So which means that beside the DHCP server, we can use the AC or the switch to assign IP to the uh, STA. In most cases, aggregation switch is used as a DHCP server. So we can use a DHCP uh, configure on the aggregation switch. So again, you can see the DORA, Discover Offer Request Acknowledgement uh, on the DHCP. Next, we look into the user authentication. Earlier on, we look into the access authentication, right? So access authentication is where the station uh, support the WEP, WPA or WPA2. But user authentication are slightly different. In user authentication, it's an end-to-end -end security architecture. It can support 802.1x, MAC address and portal authentication mode. This is an portal authentication where you successfully connect to the AP. Then the AP is going to ask you to fill in this information. And this is being controlled by the AC or another controller, such as the security server. So a portal authentication is also known as web authentication. Portal authentication website I refer to web portal. To access the internet, user must authenticate on the web portal. The user can access network resource only when successful authentication. Now this is important, especially if you log into a hotel, the hotel do not want to just use a pre shared key because then uh, it will be not secure. And they also do not want to use 802.1x because it's a bit troublesome to enroll you on 802.1x. So what they need to do here is that they give you a unique password for a different guests. So this is where the user authentication become very useful.